Good evening and welcome to Monday Evening Prayer. Tonight's prayer is an eclectic form of prayer. I was going to do the Divine Office of Vespers, but suddenly my heart was saying, no, let Spirit guide you and personalize it. So Spirit, the Spirit of God, will personalize prayer for all of you who've joined me and for those who are in need of specific words, maybe of comfort or healing from the Lord Christ, the physician of our soul, who bore his cross out of love and who suffered a rather cruel death out of love for you and me. So we light this light tonight for our beloved community, the Teo community of interfaith Franciscans, where we embrace all faiths in love and where we try to see the face of Christ in their woundedness, in their gifting, without judging them, but rather sharing Franciscan hospitality, which is really love, God's love. So in the name of all names, in the name of the God of many names, we welcome you to this celebration of love. Amen. And this evening, <clears throat> we're aware that Sister Laura's friend, whom we remembered this morning, is now actually in surgery, having this large growth removed from his neck. So we send Sam all our love, and we will remember him during the intercession. So we begin again, drawn by the heart, to read a prayer from Peace Prayers from the World's Faiths. And the first is more of reflection given to us by Sister Regina Bomkart, a member of the Brahma Kumaras. Peace is energy, a qualitative energy, which emanates constantly from the one imperishable source. It is a pure force that penetrates the shell of chaos and by its very nature automatically puts things and people into balanced order. The self is a reservoir of vital resources, one of which is peace. Through connection with the one eternal and unlimited source of peace, our own reservoirs overflow with silent strength. In its purest form, peace is inner silence filled with the power of truth. Peace consists of pure thoughts, pure feelings and pure wishes. And when the energy of thought, word and action is balanced, stable and non-violent, the individual is at peace with the self in relationships and with the world. To exercise the power of peace, embraces the fundamental principle of spirituality. Look inward in order to look outward with courage, purpose and meaning. And the first step in that process takes careful examination of one's thoughts, feelings and emotions and motives. By opening the window of the inner self, Individuals are able to clarify and pinpoint attitudes and behaviour patterns which are destructive, causing chaos and peacelessness. Peace is the foundation, the major building block upon which a healthy, functional society stands. Peace is the prominent characteristic of what we call a civilised society, and the character of a society can be seen through the collective consciousness of its members. A civilization can be heaven or hell depending on the consciousness of its members. Consciousness creates a culture, its norms, values and systems, and consciousness can tr transform culture. Ultimately, when all minds are focused and stabilized on the one imperishable source of peace, and synchronized throughout the world, the reverberations of peace emitted from the silence will echo, world peace is declared. Isn't that an awesome reflection? Thank God for the Brahma Kumaras and our dear friend Jane, who comes to our monthly services, is a member of the Brahma Kumaras, 
and she's really educated my heart to their peace-loving gatherings and the good that they do through love. It really embarrasses me sometimes as a Christian to see how within the Christian family of nearly 2,000 divisions, where many are at loggerheads with one another, and where many sit in judgment, especially from the born-again Bible-bashing evangelical belt. They're so judgmental of God's children who don't share their belief, but they do believe in God, albeit given a different name. So let us now begin. And our Monday evening prologue of our dear brother and sister as scenes of Mount Sinai, we read, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. And Monday evening, guess who we commune with? The angel of peace saying, angel of peace, peace, peace. Angel of peace be always everywhere. And we now reflect the crescent moon and the moonlight, invoking and visualizing universal peace in all spheres of life. Let us be still. And for our members of our community who are struggling and many of God's children who email me for prayer, many are stuck in this time warp due to this energetic shift of consciousness where so many of us are being attacked over and over and over by the Antichrist to take us off our path, to fill us with delusions of grandeur and sometimes, more often than not, to ignore the heart and the messages of Christ to our heart. But they'd rather listen to the voices that go to the head and the ego, ego that really leads them astray. So we pray this beautiful protection prayer for all light bringers of peace, all faiths and none. In the name of all that is, I draw a bloodline by faith around myself, my health, my abundance, my home, my partner, my family, my life's work, my friends, my clients and their associates, together with the brothers and sisters of the Teo community of interfaith Franciscans and all Franciscans in the Christian family, and all of you gathered here. We draw a bloodline by faith knowing that there is power, wondrous power, in the blood of the cosmic Christ Jesus. And neither Satan, nor any of his co-workers, dark energies or entities can ever cross such a sacred bloodline, amen. Feel free to use this prayer. But then there's another beautiful prayer. We believe in thee, beloved Sananda Jesus, and we trust in thee, come to the aid of our weakness and our incapacity. Grant that we may be able to make thee known and loved by all men and women of all faiths and none, and that confident in the immensity of thy love, we may be able to combat the evil which is in us and in the entire world for thy glory and our salvation. Amen. And the next prayer is a prayer we used to say as young postulants and novices back in the 60s when I was training to be a nursing mom, living the contemplative life for three years. It was an interesting life and it introduced me to some beautiful liturgy and this prayer is one of them. In the comfort of your love, I pour out to you, my brother Jesus, the memories that haunt me, the anxieties that perplex me, the fears that stifle me, the sickness that prevails upon me and the frustration of all the pain that weaves about within me. Lord, help me to see your peace in my turmoil, your compassion in my sorrow, your forgiveness in my weakness and your love in my need. Touch me, O Christ, with your healing power and with your strength so that I may return to you a child of God who is whole perfect 
and complete. Now I'm guided to read from John O'Donoghue a book of blessings and you'll never guess what we were guided to read. The blessing of angels for all here and beyond. May the angels in their beauty bless you. May they turn toward you streams of blessings. May the angel of awakening stir your heart to come alive to the eternal within you, to all the invitations that quietly surround you. May the angel of healing turn your wounds into sources of refreshment. May the angel of the imagination enable you to stand on the true thresholds at ease with your ambivalence and drawn in new directions through the glow of your contradictions. May the angel of compassion open your eyes to the unseen sufferings around you. May the angel of wildness disturb the places where your life is domesticated and safe, take you to the territories of the true otherness, where all that is awakened in you can fall into its own rhythm. May the angel of Eris introduce you to the beauty of your senses, to celebrate your inheritance as a temple of the Holy Spirit. May the angel of justice disturb you to take the side of the poor and the wronged. May the angel of encouragement confirm you in worth and self-respect, that you may live with the dignity that presides in your soul. May the angel of death arrive only when your life is complete and you have brought every given gift to the threshold where its infinity can shine. May all the angels be sheltering and joyful guardians. Oh, thank you, Lord, for our guardian angel and for the angelic realm. And you know, I'm guided oh, to read this to you from the Christian tradition by name, made in your image, every single one, knit together, every single one, called into being, every single one, no matter what the headline says, no matter what the state of my purse says, no matter what my postcode says, no matter what my accent says, every single one, called into being, called by name, no matter where I shop, no matter who I sit next to, no matter what the label, no matter. God of the poor, God of the rich, God of the struggling. Somewhere in between, rise with us in the morning and dare to dream. Turn our heads with your vision of justice and joy. May we work together with hope as your guide. May we greet all your children by name alone. Amen. And that's by Elaine Downey from the Iona community. Isn't that a lovely prayer? Oh, wow. And now I'm guided. Yes, I am. Ah, Jesus calling. It just stared at me. I'm opening it at random as I'm guided to do by spirit. And I'm just going to read the words of Jesus channeled to a beautiful light being called Sarah Young. And the book is called Jesus Calling. Oh, gosh. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. This is my continual invitation to you, proclaimed in holy whispers. When your heart and mind are quiet, you can hear me inviting you to draw near. Coming close to me requires no great effort on your part. It is more like ceasing to resist the magnetic pull of my love. Open yourself to my loving presence so that I may fill you with my fullness. I want you to experience how wide and long and high and deep is my love for you so that you can know my love that surpasses knowledge. This vast ocean of love cannot be measured or explained, but it can be experienced. Oh Lord, thank you for speaking to our hearts. And now we come to a reflection. 
they're more like intercessory prayers. So let's go with it. Let the peace from the members, the brothers and sisters, friends and associates of the Teo community of interfaith Franciscans surround you as you sit or kneel quietly this evening. Let the hurry and worry of your life fall away from you. You are God's child. He loves you and cares for you. He is here with you now and always. Speak to God slowly and thoughtfully. Give yourself to our Father, Mother God, to bring things to mind. Lord, thank you for your presence here, for the opportunity to pray, for the promise of peace, for the beauty of the world, the kindness of people, for all whom I love, my brothers and sisters in our community, and all God's children of all faiths and none, lifestyle choices and what have you. We are all one, we are all equal, and I pray that I can love you all from a selfless heart. For the cross of Christ and the power of the Spirit guides me. Help me to show my gratitude in deed as well as words, especially now that we're in Lent. Lord, I am sorry for the times when I have been hasty or unkind, especially to those that you've brought into my life, where I've had to be strict and disciplined with certain members of our community, where often silence was chosen by spirit rather than words. Thought or acted selfishly, failed to forgive or ask forgiveness, forgotten your presence, taken your love for granted. I thank you for your promise to forgive all those who turn back to you in penitence. And there's more. Lord, I am troubled. I am anxious and distressed for myself and for the many who ask for prayer, especially about their situation at this time. Help me to trust your love for you carry our sorrows. Teach me to act and to speak in the way that you want. Give me the wisdom to know when not to interfere. Calm my fears for all things are in your hands. Lord, I pray for my family this evening, for my blood family, for my mom and dad and sister Eileen and Margaret and my nephew Stephen, with my grandparents and all my ancestors who are with you in spirit, together with my dear brother Eddie and Timothy and sister Carol, good friends who've crossed over and all our beautiful pets, especially little Clemmy and Poppy. And last night, our little, our little hen, three-year-old hen, called Roadrunner, who died in a little basket on my bed that we were keeping an eye on for a few hours and then crossed over. It's been a tough week, a tough few months, really, losing so many beautiful creatures. But I also pray for my spiritual family, the brothers and sisters of the Teo community, past and present, especially dear sister Miriam in New Zealand. Such a joy to know that we have a beautiful mystic and hermit there in New Zealand praying for all of us. With sister Nancy in Mexico, with sister Jackie in Idaho, with brother Matthew in Texas and brother Brian our amazing Franciscan trucker who does great things for the homeless as he drives from one end of America to the other. For dear Sister Buffy, a true friend and a beautiful angel of light there in New York City. And not forgetting our dear Eleanor and Elizabeth in Philadelphia. For Brother Paul, the founder of the Franciscan Hermits and dear Sister Mary McGates in California. But I don't forget Brother Liam in London, who works with the homeless, and Sister Jane in Coventry, who truly has tasted suffering. We pray for dear Jane, and Jackie also. We pray for dear Sister Diane in Lee, and her nine-year-old grandson Tyler. But we pray tonight especially for Sister Laura, a dear friend of the community, and her friend Sam, who's now in surgery for this huge growth at the side of his neck and we pray for a miracle that it's benign but we remember sister um, we remember there's a few bear with me 
my brother Shay, who's doing really well. We remember Ian and Jane in Cumbria, Melanie in great discomfort, and ask for emotional healing and strength. For Joan Worrell, Jane's sister's mother-in-law. For George Hansen. For Caroline Burt on the Isle of Wight, a beautiful woman who's one of our friends on Twitter with Sister Veronica Paul and Julie. And of course, for Laura's friend, Sam. But Sister Corazon de los Santos, a third order Franciscan in Winnipeg, who truly has also known suffering, losing three brothers to gunshot wounds and her mom. And now she worries for her son, Daniel, who's unwell and her brother, Faustian. I pray that God's peace will touch dear Sister Corazon so that she will sleep a restful sleep and know that Christ is touching her in her sleep. Oh, and for Skip on Google Hangouts with Thomas Aquinas Q and all those who acknowledge our submissions of our videos to our friends on social media. I cannot thank you enough for your love and support. We pray for the Frank Clara Abbey God's Vision with St. Francis for the Teo community to welcome 12 men and women to live the hermetic life and to give their life for interspiritual unity in the Cathedral of God where all faiths come as one and embrace the divine in each other without words or dogma. And when we dance the canticle of the creatures to the whirling dervish, around the sanctuary of love and peace and unity. We give thanks to God for that beautiful vision. So let us now be still for a moment as we bring our own personal troubles. Let's name them, bless them, they're ours, and now release them to God in that mindset of gratitude and love and leave them with God. Don't take them back, leave them so that you're free to listen to that inner voice of Christ speaking to your heart. And I would like to share this beautiful prayer that we received from <clears throat> Sister Jane in Coventry, when my brother Shay was very ill on life support machine in intensive care. And she said, may I humbly offer this prayer to you and your family? Well, I'm offering it to you. Thy name is my healing, O my God, and remembrance of thee is my remedy. Nearness to thee is my hope, and love for thee is my companion. Thy mercy to me is my healing and my succour in both this world and the world to come. Thou verily art the all-bountiful, the all-knowing, the all-wise. And that was composed by the founder of the Baha'i faith, Bahula, a beautiful spiritual community of love. But we pray for the 16 members of the Baha'i faith who are still imprisoned and being tortured in Iran because they're members of the Baha'i faith. God forgive them. And now we pray the beautiful Lord's Prayer. It's a different version. I hope you enjoy it. Our God, you are everywhere, infinite and eternal, unknowable. Yet we call upon you and give you a sacred name. Your will brings everything into being, the multiverse and all dimensions. It is by your grace that we live. You see us as whole and perfect. We pray that we learn forgiveness so that we can see others as whole and perfect too. Guide us to understand that wealth and power are illusions, and as we dwell in the world of duality, let us discern and eschew evil, for you are beyond duality. You are our only reality forever and ever. Amen. And we're going to close now one of the prayers that Brother Rob shared with us yesterday for our beautiful monthly peace service on forgiveness. And this, this is called a prayer for understanding. May I come to understand that the blessings are everywhere, that my attitude will affect outcomes, that challenges are often gifts in disguise. May I come to trust that most things can get better with time, 
that my instincts and gut feelings have value, that a positive attitude makes things go smoother. May I come to see that I have many skills and talents I can use, that I am a positive influence on many people, that there are those around me who wish me well, that I may come to value that today is a blessing and to be enjoyed, that each person is unique and important, that each moment of my life has meaning. And I think that's it. Thank you for those beautiful words, dear Brother Lord. And now for the Celtic blessing, the blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky, the blessing of all those whom the Lord God has brought into our lives and to the many who've asked our prayer and support. And we give thanks to our Father, Mother, God for each and every child of God of all faiths and none and for the God of many names who touches each one of us. May our beloved brother, Sun and Sister Moon and the angels of the animal kingdom now shower your life with love and we give thanks to God for our beautiful puppy who passed away in my arms last Friday and for little Roadrunner, our three-year-old hen, who lost her battle last evening and for all our beautiful pets and for all those who love their pets but especially those who are going through the process of bereavement and grieving for their loving, loving pets which are like their children so we pray for you and with you. And now we end by saying Namaste, Shalom, Inshallah, Pax et Bonum, Om Shanti, Solo di Carita, Salam Alaikum, and may the peace of a loving God, a God who has many names, reawaken in your heart this evening the presence of Christ, Listen to his voice, be guided by what he shares with you, and surrender your hearts to love. Amen. Thank you all for joining me, and I look forward to your company soon. But for now, I wish you all a blessed evening. Take care, and God bless. And thank you.